Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Friday edition of Moohead Radio. I am your host, A Big and Furry Bovine. As we promise every week, twice a week, this is what we do. We come here, even if we have very little to say. It was really funny. Somebody uh, commented on the show and said, wow, that was like a whole lot of nothing. And I said, a big bowl of nothing. Absolutely. <laughs> Damn proud of it. Thank you so much. Uh, now I'm putting the link up for all to be able to join in. And now also, uh, Mary, Mary, why am I talking like Ed Sullivan? I hate it. When I, it's like, now you know, now you know, right here, right here in our chat room. I got to put up this fucking link is what I got to do. Topo Gigio. Yeah, so uh, I guess I have to. Tell them out. what they've won, Don Pardo. <laughs> hey, somebody didn't put up, hey, somebody didn't put up the address like they were supposed to. Oops. You're not doing that thing you do. Yeah. All right. And uh, you are now the co host, uh, Rox. Uh, Rox has received death threats for Mommy Dearest. Um, so uh, yeah, I want to apologize in advance. That was uh, maybe uh, I, I it, it really it was more than uh, I should have allowed. But, you know, under the circumstances, we have nothing else to talk about anyway. So it comes down to mommy dearest. So why the hell not? All right. How is everybody today? Y'all hanging in there? Yeah. Not too bad. Yeah. So lost far. Right. That's good. <laughs> and, and, and lost Rock's the former coach. Yeah. You know, uh, the Jordan documentary killed him. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, and, and you know. Showing I, it a I, poor it, light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you want to know the, the thing of, you know, life imitating art is the notion that Jerry Sloan passed away at 78 years of age right after the completion of the Jordan documentary, which further denigrated Stockton and Malone and made everybody remember just, you know, who got pissed on and when. Uh, the Dan By the way, Jerry Sloan was one of the first Chicago Bulls uh, to to get their number retired. Yeah, I yeah, he was a good player in his time. His career got cut short, but he had a known disciplinarian and it became a very good head coach. Uh, but the damnedest part of it is when Jordan found out that Sloan passed away, he shrugged. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's just another one of those classic examples of life imitating art. Uh, but props to Jerry Sloan, a very, uh, very fine uh, career. Uh, just, just, <laughs> I, maybe he wanted to actually shove him over like he did for Brian Wilson. <laughs> yeah, fucking a little nudge. <laughs> yeah, and Jordan went on again to talk more about the flu game. It's like we really give a shit. Uh, just to remind you, the country that you live in, uh, you know, the the company that was going to promise the wonderful breakthrough vaccine. Well, just another governmental scam Moderna's stock price skyrocketed 30 percent on monday after they announced promising early results for its coronavirus vaccine but as ordinary investors plowed their money in like the idiots they are two insiders were quietly heading for the exits including Moderna's chief financial officer and chief medical officer executed options and sold $30 million worth of shares combined on Monday and Tuesday after the good news to, in essence, make a killing while probably occur, you know, causing more killings. <coughs> after spiking to as high as $87, the stock now is retreated below $70 and is still in free fall because they're all a bunch of lying, cocksucking sons of bitches. Nobody cares about a vaccine. Donald Trump doesn't care about a vaccine. He's already stated the country stays open even if there is a second wave of the damn thing. Nobody cares because you know something? As long as it's the old and weak who are dying, we're good with it. And if we can make some money off this thing, all the better. Uh, to me, it's just, it's so disturbing. It's just, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. I, I want to move on to the next disturbing thing it's like the pronunciation between lawyer and liar 
is a is a very very small one indeed. And if any of you have known any lawyers in your life, you know, uh, you know that you have to be very careful about listening to exactly what they say, and then you're not exactly sure what they said. Well, the lawyer who represented the Tara Reid, the woman who's accused Joe Biden, just announced that the firm is no longer handling her. Well, if they did handle her, she'd sue. <laughs> <laughs> The, 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 the bottom line is, is that her own law firm doesn't believe her, ladies and germs. So take that to everybody who's just making a political sham out of a worldwide epidemic or pandemic. Uh, there are other things, though, that are really interesting. Now they're saying that up to 40 percent of the people who get the disease caught it from somebody who was asymptomatic. That's uh, that's interesting. It would tell me that if that is the case, if that's true, because we not, we don't believe anything anymore that we see, that we read, that we hear. We can't believe that. But if what they're saying is true and who they are, we'll find out now, won't we? Then the numbers will invariably go up as we open up the economy and will go up in a large way. There's no lying about this. If 40% of the cases are coming from asymptomatic people who are spreading the disease, so be it. Then the only way to avoid it is to do what Rox and I are doing, uh, which is basically not going anywhere. Just, you know, lock me in and throw the key away. That's basically, you know, that's the way to get rid of, you know, or you get through it, you survive it, and uh, you have created antibodies in your system. But hope, you know, but if this is true, boy, it's going to be a very interesting next several months. And I, for one, really can't wait. <sighs> in a similar vein, I believe we're headed towards 40 million uh, filing for unemployment. Uh, I mean, 10.6% Manatee County unemployment as of right this moment. It's going to get more than that. Uh, and yeah, it, it's uh, becoming an absolute, uh, so. you know, this whole thing is uh, not not good. And, and now, yeah, you know, Trump is going to claim that the federal government's role is to open churches, not to do anything else. The states care, take care of everything, but when the state's governor said that they don't want to open up churches, then Trump comes in and steps over them for that Christian vote. As long as we understand where all this is going, folks, on both sides, don't, don't say that it's just Donald Trump, it's the Democrats as well. We know damn well the drive for uh, the, uh, the ballots, right? Uh, in the yeah, you ballots. can't go to church, but goddamn, you can kill a fucking baby, though. Yeah, you know, and, and you know something, if one more person says that to me, I'm going to find your baby and kill it. Um, no. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. It's, that would be kind of a hard, you know, but the, the, the thing is. is 30 years of condom use, baby. Yeah. Oh, by the way, turn your mic a little down, Brian. You're a little oh. bit on the hot side. So uh, <coughs> I don't mean from an appearance perspective, buddy. <laughs> I mean, um, um. yeah, strictly from a, an uh, audio perspective but i think it is interesting differentiating when you use federal powers and when you don't depends on what vote you're really looking for but the uh the absentee ballots in the the mail thing we uh, democrats know what donald trump knows which is if you just had the election in the midst of the pandemic that his followers trump's followers would all vote 100 percent of them but the democrats would not for fear of the virus therefore they would not show up and trump would win and uh, the Democrats speaking of, were... speaking of, did did anybody else see the story about the uh, the Maryland ballots being found in South or the South Carolina ballots being found in Maryland? No, and uh, you know, but this has never been. I mean, ever since I was a kid, you know, the idea of voting more than once or dead people voting and all of this stuff, you know. And if, if and if you live in Florida, hanging chads and it allowed Bush to be elected to office, literally handing him the presidency in a really odd, and we'll just put it that way, finish. 
the, the, the fact of the matter is the party machine at the yeah. time in Florida was Republican. And so it no. leaned Republican. Right. And so it would have been had it been Democratic. It would have been either way the same thing because they're the same party except on different polar ends of the spectrum. But they're basically, the, 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 let's put it this way, it's the creation of, this, of the divisionists. And you know they've done an effective job of turning the public against one another. Um, Hanging Chad was my punk band in Hebrew school. Yeah. <laughs> in Hebrew school, I, 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 I <laughs> we were we had a band called the Ain Kalo Hanus. Okay, now we're not even going to start talking Hebrew. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they were they were talking about polls and how in some of the polls that that Biden was ahead, but that doesn't mean anything because that's a popular vote. I mean, the president didn't win the popular vote, but won the electoral college and That's right. became president. So when you're saying a poll says such and such a thing, if it's not based on state by state, then it's garbage. So Who shows up? Yeah. Who shows up and actually votes? That's what it comes down well, to. It, it, most of the polling, it, they, they skew it 15% heavier towards the democrats anyway so well and then the other thing is is that the the big news story this week about how the president was tweeting about how uh fox news was doing nothing to help republicans and himself get reelected in november oh my last i checked i thought the news's job was just to report the news but that seems kind of <laughs> have you seen cnn like, lately <laughs> well true but here's the thing or msnbc for that matter or but, even the three but, networks but here's, are, but, here's, are... but here's here's the thing when Shit. when you're you're ripping your own base now you're in trouble and then and a lot of that had to do with neil cavuto was upset was uh saying that because the president was taking what hydroxychloroquine as a preventative measure when there's all kinds of stories about whether it helps at all, even when you're sick, da, 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 whatever. And he got upset about it now saying that they used to be great. And now they're hot garbage. It's just like, come on, man. You know, that's just. Well, I mean, the, the, the fact of the matter is, is that he said that he just was finishing up a two week run of. Uh, uh, and I've even bothered to look up. Uh, I don't believe he ever took it. I'm sorry. He was not taking that medication. I, I can guarantee you he never took it. Um, they're not going to allow the president of the United States to take a non-tested experimental drug. They're not going to allow, who's not infected. They're not going to allow that to happen under any circumstance. Uh, so uh, he did what he was supposed to do. I'm sure that he received- Wait, I thought this has been funding. around for 60 years. Yeah, it's, campaign funding. What, what? I mean, uh, no, yeah. no, 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 no. You don't understand. Big Pharma, uh, it, it, it incorporates generic companies as well as you know companies like Sanofi and the people who are who were once drug developers who don't develop anymore they just raise the price of their existing medication um but no Bristol uh, Meyer Squibb hmm. yeah hey, it's a hey, it's a huge I, go ahead I came here to talk about sports and I am not going to sit here and uh, listen to you badmouth the president of the United States and suggest that he might be Lying. Come on. <laughs> Are, is this otter from, from Animal House? <laughs> I'd like 20,000 marbles, please. <laughs> All right, let's go to sports, shall we? I'll start humming the Battle Hymn of the Republic. <laughs> Don't know the words, huh? Toga. Toga. <laughs> Toga. All right, now sports. Uh, the NFL, and I Jesus, want everybody. I guess that makes me D Day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no. It's not a bad one to be. Yeah, it kind of does. Tony. Like, what are you talking I'd, about? Yeah, I'd like to be D Day. That's pretty cool. Who is the brain damaged guy? Oh, Stork. Stork. Yeah. yeah. That's one of the co writers. Yeah, he's one of the writers. He, 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 oh, yeah. The, who died mountain climbing? Yeah. No, no. He drove his car off. The Allegedly. Line. Yeah, he's suicide. Oh, was it really? Doug, yeah. uh, Doug, Doug Kenny? Flynn. Kenny. Doug Kenny. Doug Kenny. Kenny, that's Kenny. right. Yeah, yeah, he was uh, one of the guys. National who, Lampoon. Uh, yeah, that's right. A yep. big national Every, Lampoon. Everyone thought Stork was retarded. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe he was. Uh, 
the NFL has decided in its infinite yeah. wisdom that when we change rules and it changes the face of the mm -hmm. game, we have to change more rules. It's kind of like digging a ditch and trying to dig your way out of a ditch. Well, when they changed all the rules for alleged safety consideration about kickoffs, it all but killed the onside kick. So that now it's virtually impossible to get a running start. You can't do anything. And so it's just kind of a fait accompli. Now they're considering going to, instead of an onside kick, the team will be given a fourth and 15 yards to go play from their own 25 yard line when trailing in a game just to attempt to retain possession of the ball under a proposed rule. All right. Now, I, I guess this is a little bit odd to me. Um, I keep thinking of it this way. I don't want to give the Browns yet another way to lose <laughs> at the last seconds of the game. We've seen it far too often. Um, you know, why don't they just allow the onside kick to have the way it used to be and just play it out that way. And so the people who are good at performing the onside kick will get possession. The team that doesn't know how to do it won't. Uh, the other thing before you guys can just say whatever you want to say about this potential rule, uh, and which is not completely just explained to me, like if you get the fourth and 15, where do you get the ball? I don't quite understand that either. Um, I believe it's the 25 yard line, yeah. your 25 yard line. Right. Uh, all right. So, all right. So, so you would that, have to get to your 40 in order right. to maintain or 41 to maintain yeah. possession. And then you risk gotcha. the other team getting the ball on your 25 yard line in case you fail or wherever. And or you if you fumble or interception or whatever, then it's yeah. inside. The All team. of a sudden, there your opposing team is in your red zone PDQ. But the thing I don't understand is the team that has been controlling the game that is ahead and leading the game. Do we have to make a rule to make it easier for the team that's coming back to come back? Let's go to the panel right now and we will start uh, up with. Jim Hammer time. All right, uh, we're going to let uh, Amsterdam in here as well because once again, Rox, the co-host, was not paying attention to somebody <laughs> trying to get in. Uh, <laughs> Drop the ball, Jim. What do you think of the fourth and fifteen? It's interesting. You know, new rules. Um, I did watch some of the XFL, and they had all those weird kickoff rules that they had, where the team basically lined up and nobody did anything until um, they got to where it had to be. Uh, that you know, it, trying something new is interesting. I don't know that they'd want to tr at least try it out in the preseason before they put it into regular season games, but I don't know. It's not going to kill me one way or the other. It, I think you 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 nailed it when you said that that they've basically taken away the onside kick the way that it is now, and it's just like it's the not kickoff. Even a factor, and the, no. and the kickoff is nothing. They might as well just give the other team the ball at the forty and start from there or the thirty five. Because nobody returns a kickoff anymore. It's, it's kicks in the end zone. You know. Yeah. I, the thing is, I mean, the onside kick was at least an exciting play. It was a low percentage play, but it was what the team deserved for falling it behind in the first place. Super Bowl. Place. Yeah. It, it decided a Super Bowl. Yeah, but I, I'm saying for a team that's the Colts behind, ended up losing because of that. Yep. But, you know, if you're behind, it's the Hail Mary. It's, you know, and it's the low percentage thing, but you fell behind and that's the way it works. And it's exciting because it's kind of like I was watching the Indians against the uh, Orioles game three in 1997, where Marquise Grissom stole home plate based on a bunt that Omar Vizquel missed or maybe foul tip that the catcher didn't hold on to. But I mean, you run a suicide squeeze zero zero in the bottom of the 12th inning and you're playing for keeps you, if that wipes out, you know, that it wipes out that we had men on first and third, Tony Fernandez had hit a single Grissom. There was uh, I believe one out in the situation. They weren't even going to hope for a sack fly with this Kel, who was a steady bunter is like, well, we're just going to do the suicide squeeze. I mean, that's what the onside kick is. It's kind of an exciting play. And uh, I don't want to see that. Uh, I'd rather think go back. I mean, why can't they go back? How much damage compared to the damage that's already being done to players can an onside kick cause? Could we go back to the old kickoff rules and let you have a running start and all that shit? 
What, what do you think, Rick? Oh, I think they keep keep tweaking it. I guess they figure you know this might present more excitement. Seems to me like if, by doing it this way, does that mean that uh, they don't need to keep that many people on their special teams? That that maybe they can pare that down a little bit because you're going to have your your offensive team out there one less play <laughs> for the special teams. I don't know if that'll give them cause to phase it out. You know, let's let let them try and do it during the uh, the preseason games. And you know what? See what kind of feedback you might get from the fans and the players and the coaches, and then you know, based on that, maybe make a a more educated decision before the season actually starts. Uh, and and rocks, uh, is that country time lemonade you're drinking? <laughs> Not quite, no. Okay. Wild Wilders. Uh. You you, you got you got to share some with us if you do the mommy dearest thing probably, again. Uh, she's living with you, so it's probably Mike's hard lemonade. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not Mark's, but it's. Uh, so uh, Ziffles, you piggy, you're next. Fourth and fifteen. You like, you know, like. I think it's fine, but I think what we're doing here is trying to find new creative ways to show the fans that we're not going to do the other things we used to do. And now the, all they were ever worried about was liability. They don't care if a guy who's in the league for one or two years dies, they could not possibly care about that. All they care about is liability. So now we can have the wedge for a few years that we can have these returns and everything. And then people are, are going to start saying, well, we have no fun returns. So, well, now this is fun. Look at this. Look what we're doing with this now. It's just a distraction. It's just the usual crap. But you, you know okay. what's funny, Ziff? You know, uh, uh, Terry Pluto, my favorite writer of all time, as you well know. Uh, I sometimes jack off to him. I probably shouldn't admit that. You shouldn't admit that. No. <laughs> so it's bad form. Yeah, cut down on your video intake there. Sometimes. <laughs> but, <laughs> sorry, sorry. No. What, sorry. What he wrote right. was Not sometimes, pretty much all the time. But you're right. Harry, like, your thoughts? Uh, apparently, apparently, Ziffles has mastered the uh, mating hall of the platypus. Plutopus. The Plutopus. <laughs> the Plutopus. <laughs> the Plutopus. <laughs> oh, that's right, Terry. Come the, Terry on. the Terry Bill Plutopus. Talk yeah. about the gospel. <laughs> Talk about the gospel, baby. Talk about the gospel. <laughs> Why, why is the first two pages of Genesis stuck together? No, um, the, <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Uh, but no, he said, who's the next Who's the next Joshua Cribs going to be? And I'm like, nah, there is no, there is no kick returns. Who could be the next Joshua Cribs? The next guy who occasionally didn't, comes But didn't up? Cribs uh, also do punt returns? Yeah, he did kickoffs and punts. Kickoffs and punts. Yeah, and I, I, mean, I think didn't he have a couple of punt returns for touchdowns? Oh sure, sure. Yeah. But I mean, so Donovan Peoples Jones could feasibly be the the next Joshua Cribs. Uh, uh, moving and right along, and Andy Janovich could feasibly be the next Lawrence Vickers. <laughs> Lawrence Vickers. Well, oh, God. there's a guy who has a religious last name. Uh, the Vickers, yes. Don't be, quote, uh, don't be quoting Vickers here. Uh, Amsterdam. Uh, what, what, what do Vickers. you think, Amsterdam? Yay or nay on fourth and fifteen? Yeah, why not? Do it for a year. You know, they always like these little novelty things. Act like they're trying to be more innovative in uh, keeping the youth involved. So it's a harmless play. <laughs> Fuck hey, it. Bro Brian, here. Uh, as opposed to to what they have now, um, it's better. But I don't think that there's too many teams that could actually successfully do that, other than Kansas City, maybe Baltimore. I mean, you really have to have a specific kind of offense that can, can uh, that can get 15 yards like that special All set of skills yeah if they were behind it means they didn't have good quarterback play to begin with and god put them in that position well, not, not necessarily because the browns got up on them 
Uh, well, with that play, at least you're keeping the offense involved and not having a special teams kind of a trick play, you know. Yeah, improve the chances for a pick six. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the point of the game is advancement one direction or the other on the field, right? So if you have to kick the ball, I don't know. I Whatever. That's fine. Well, that was a great anybody, analysis. <laughs> there won't be anybody in the stands to watch it. So that's right. There's there's no, nobody there. to cheer. Can we, can, can we prove that the play existed to begin with? But if you, if their word against point, ours, if the point is advancement down the field and you have a kicking play at the end of a score or whatever, and they, uh, we're going to try to keep the ball. Isn't that, was, weren't the rules pretty good to begin with? Am I wrong? Weren't the rules pretty good? Like, we'll give you. Are you talking like 15 years ago? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, rules maybe a lot longer than that. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, I thought they were pretty good 15 years ago. Well, I, yeah. Well, I, I thought that I I enjoyed it when teams were able to actually play pass defense too. I mean, you know. Right. I, I, uh, yeah, I I kind of liked the game the way the game was and. Uh, so what do I am just saying? What are we improving? What are we doing? I don't think that the game is being improved. I think that as you, it's one of these things. It's kind of like the ripple in the water. That it's gets, not improving. It's evolving. Yeah, and, and they have to keep making rule changes to keep up with the previous rule changes, and so it really does morph and, and, a lot and of parts love, of the game. I love those semantics, but I'm saying, is it better? Well, I don't think the game, the game is financially more rewarding because they charge more to watch it and uh, people which don't is, seem which to is think. The point. But can't you also guide what they think about that financially? I mean, I, I don't know that rule changes absolutely <coughs> make it more profitable. I think you sell the rule changes. Am I wrong about that? Uh, yeah, but I, th I think that people have bought them. I mean, I think that, you know, people answer the question. If you make a, a rule change that is really bad, I suppose that, you know, people could say, you know, fuck this and uh, and walk away from the sport or you'd have no, to diminish no. viewing. How silly was the review of, of interference last year, past interference? And people are actually debating whether that was even good that they got rid of it right away. I mean, how clearly was that? <laughs> Am I wrong? Well, and then they then they changed it during the season too. The interpretation right. changed I'm... as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, the the whole thing is there's a hole in the system, and the system is that the referees make some timely calls for certain franchises. We all know it to be the case. We've seen it too many times. Too many butt fumbles. Too many things that don't make any sense. And then they, after the fact, try to cover it up by saying, oh, well, we've made this rule change. And you, you could bet that the second that a Super Bowl was challenged by fans because of a faux pass interference call, uh, that that would be the case. And it's just lip service. Those types of things, I, you know, it's just like all these, we're reviewing this play and reviewing that play. I have seen some of the worst calls stand. If that's what they're going to do, they will just bold faced, just that's what we're going to do. And it doesn't matter what the fucking camera shows. And, and you'll be I'm sitting not, there at home and going, wait a minute, uh, that clearly came up short of where they the flag was put. And, you know, the measurement, it doesn't matter. They're going to roll and, with it. And I'm not trying to dominate this, but I would like to ask all of your very learned participants does anybody believe that any of these reactionary rules have worked and made football better and i would love to hear it they do anybody does it th anybody think the game is a better game because of the rule changes especially rule changes that were allegedly implemented to aid in player safety um taking the head slap out of the game Deacon well, now Jones is off. Uh, but you know, uh, uh, but I mean, since then, and you would admit that's a long time ago. So all these reactionary rules, 
and you would agree that they're reactionary. Good but you're bad. you're you're talking about the reactionary rules within the last ten years. Well, I think 20, 25 years. I don't think I'm saying ten years. Am I wrong? I mean, I'm, this stuff's been going on for a long time. You know, it would be an interesting thing to allow defensive backs to use their hands more, just to see what we would end up with. Um, I think what you would see is a lot of really average yeah, quarterbacks at the league becoming lousy quarterbacks because it would only be the guys who could dot the eye with the ball, man, that would get the ball through the wind. And I also sometimes wonder, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I sometimes wonder how great quarterbacks would do with rules that didn't allow, like how much do those rule changes create? Certain well, go back to um, Dan Marino's career, right? As an example, um, he played with hand checking and and bump and run coverage and all kinds of other. Yeah, so, I mean, I still believe the most physically talented quarterback I've ever seen in the modern era. Are you going to say something, Jim? I was going to say, think it, it for that matter. Think of the wide receivers as well. Yeah, uh, it, the yeah. fact that we have wide receivers now who don't face nearly the some of the things that they may have had in the past or or differently, um, you know. Yeah, you know, what does Tyreek Hill do against Willie Brown? Especially, I, especially the way receivers go down. <laughs> he with runs soft away. <laughs> That's what he does with Willie Brown. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Man, you know, he runs right. away. You're the allowed to the bench. You're, dude, you're no, allowed I'm to, not going over the middle. Dude. Listen, I love Tyree Kill and he's very fast, but you're allowed to put your hands on him. Willie Brown might have he never runs away. But, and not well, only that, that, that where Jim was going, you, Go you would you would eliminate 75% of these wide receivers. They couldn't get off the line. These these guys, right. Uh, right. The, these new cover uh, uh, corners, they'd fucking slap them up there. They wouldn't they wouldn't get two yards off the line. And I'll say this, I mean, with a lot of the wide receivers who are temperamental injury-wise to begin with, a more physical brand of defense would only make the OBJs of the world miss more games. So the, we are breeding gazelles to run pass patterns yeah. instead of the old school guys, you know, tight ends today are like wide receivers were, right? I mean... Yeah, yeah, there are no John Mackeys, you know, left, left in the NFL. Russ Francis. Yeah, right. None of the you old. You don't have guys. you don't have those guys who are basically just an, another tackle at the end of the line um, that, that that's out there to try to to block all the time for running plays. There's a few. And of really, them. really, these guys all evolved from Jay Novacek with the Cardinals and with the with the Cowboys. Well, he was he was the first kind of. And you got people like you got people like past dominant. Well, Oz, Ozzy wasn't much of a blocker either. Neither was, you know, Gonzalez was never, you know, Tony Gonzalez, obviously one of the best tight ends in all time, but came from the basketball world. He wasn't really a blocking guy. He, he didn't do anything like that. You know, it just, those are the kind well, of they people. They started that, looking at, at basketball players. I think, uh, who is the Browns Well, if guy? you wanted a, if you wanted a blocking tight end, that was like a Pete Metzlar's for the Bills. Gates was about the only one that was a good basketball. Uh, Jordan Cameron block. wasn't he the Browns' attempt no. at doing that? That was the guy. I'm thinking. I'm thinking in the Ditka range. You know, we didn't. We didn't have guys like Ditka. <laughs> yeah, Just yeah or, earlier. Yeah. Earlier, it was the, the Ditka. A, a guy like Ditka nowadays couldn't. Gr you know, he wouldn't. Gronkowski is, up is the closest guys. to Ditka. I'm yeah. just trying to picture OBJ running down the middle, and he runs into a guy named. Jack oh, Ronnie Lott. Ronnie Lott. <laughs> well, and think about I, I watched Ronnie. <laughs> I and watched also, Ronnie Lott almost take out Willie Flipper Anderson on a long pass play. <laughs> well, and and how, uh, how, on what would all, today be, a, and it, he would have been ejected and suspended for three games. That's, that's first of all, that's five points for Willie Flipper Anderson right there. So that's five points. But I mean, imagine Chuck Cecil. One of the best safeties in football when he played, he could not play. He would be completely banned from the league after one day. Well, and think yeah. about the athleticism of the cornerbacks today if they got to play that physical way as well. 
Um, the, and the field with all the speed that they have, right. I don't, I don't know that they have the the muscle for it, but the speed that the cornerbacks have to have to have to play in today's game, it it, it could be, it would be unbelievable if they were allowed right. to to phys- be as physical right. as those players back then. And, and well, Jim, Rod, Jim, Rod Woodson and Daryl Green come to mind because those exactly. were two super fast cornerbacks from yeah. that era who who would be considered fast now. But, but if you're also, smart enough to remember, bring along some stick them like Lester Hayes. <laughs> the field doesn't change size. These guys change size and speed every single year, and the field never changes. That's a great That's point. the whole game is different every single year because you know Patrick Peterson is the most amazing thing you've ever seen until you know this year Simmons. Isaiah Simmons is giant. He's almost defensive end size, and he's playing safety in slot corner. The field never changes size. The game has to change, right? Or I don't know. Well, I think that uh, I want to move on to the next thing, which is what I call the punchline is too easy, right? And um, it goes. No. As part of the all-in challenge, the Cleveland Browns are offering the opportunity for two people to help (laughs) script the first 15 offensive plays of a preseason game. One winner will be determined via auction, another from a raffle. Proceeds uh, will raise money for Meals on Wheels, No Kid Hungry, America's Food Fund, World Central Kitchen, and Pilot Flying J's Legal Fees. Uh, I heard. I heard they, guy, water. they they didn't give the last name, but there was a guy named Freddie that had the high bid right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean that's. Oh, what, that, you stomped on my joke. Yeah, but they have a New York <laughs> number. <laughs> Please fax to. I was going to do a GoFund thing for Freddie Kitchen. Aww. One more <laughs> bite at the apple. You guys suck. <laughs> Well, you see, uh, go fuck me page from Freddie I'm Kitchens. sorry, we've 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 known each other so long. We think in the same vein now. This is well. well I preface this by saying the punchlines are too easy. Um, oh, that's right, you did, you did. Yeah, so I mean, it, but can you imagine? And let me guess, it's gonna be game four of the preseason, <laughs> and the people executing those plays will be executing them uh, <laughs> because they won't have a chance to even play in the nfl so you know all and in all it, and if it works out good enough you might get hired somewhere hey, yeah. hey also you guys i know moo is rich and you people seem at least able to just waste time so you must have some money <laughs> well maybe some of us don't have a choice at the moment <laughs> yeah we all own computers don't we? <laughs> maybe maybe we all Put some money together and get this done. I'm just saying. I'm I'm in. Uh, can we do it together as a group here? Is that... That's what I'm saying. A couple of grand. I mean, Moo's going to have to probably cough up more than most of us, but I'll put in a sizable amount. And let's, let's get these plays. Well, the next story is even, <laughs> is, is even better. Why are they running an oop-de-oop over there? Moo. <laughs> Hey, there's also before Hello. you guys go on, there's you can also get like second prizes watching a game with Bernie Kozar, and that's fantastic because I'm gonna like go. Hey, do you know? Can you can I give your daughter a call? But <laughs> the, the other thing is like, no, is it free alcohol too? With yeah, 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 Bernie taking out the tab. Or... <laughs> Listen, like I'm gonna judge Bernie for drinking too much. Supposedly get to go to dinner with him uh, at Michael Simon. Right, but Michael Simon is not going to cook for you. He's just going to like take you to melt on the west side so we can all jizz all over ourselves. How incredible it is that somebody reinvented the grilled cheese sandwich. Thanks, Mike. But I'm, I'm, I'm just. Why don't we? Why don't we? Like, okay, I'm, not, I'm losing you. I got it. I'll shut up. So it's the sourdough zipple. That's what makes it. Hi, Bronk. How you doing? Still alive, man. Somebody got hair, man. I have, I have like a cow. Somebody got a haircut. Now. No, that's not, not like Michael a cow. Simon that's thing. like you've been in Idaho lately. <laughs> oh, 
No, that's the haircut you get right before you get put in the electric chair. No, it isn't. Why aren't you wearing a white suit? You should have a white suit and trying to to hawk some cleaning supplies, I'm thinking. (laughs) No, I think it's the president. Sorry. The president of the Timothy McVeigh fan club. Wow, that's harsh. He's got the nurse ratchet right before the sponge uh, in the electrodes. <laughs> Sorry, but last time I checked, Moo, this was still America. All hey, right. What happens in the Zoom room stays in the Zoom room. <laughs> All right, uh, Bronk, I want you to do something for me. Really? <laughs> That's I want you to say <laughs> yes. one sure million dollars. Go one ahead. million dollars. <laughs> uh, All right. All right, so going back to what I was going to say. Oh, 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 oh. I'm going to interrupt you like everybody else has been interrupting you the oh, whole oh show. Oh, my God. Absolutely. This guy is so <laughs> new to show. I just realized. So, so it seems, yeah. He's been waiting all week for this. It's our it's show. No, oh, the first God. thing I heard about when they were auctioning this 15 plays was Kevin McFan. Where the fuck is Kevin McFan? Oh, man. He's a napkin. napkin. God damn it. a napkin. Yeah. Oh, sure. God bless that crazy son of a bitch. Hey, I've got sound clips of him, you know, and the, with the napkin one. I've got like a whole, like, I don't know whether I can play them, but I actually oh have like God. live files of, of like. For those who don't know, Kevin McFan was a guy who was a listener of the program who called in and claimed that he should be the one calling the plays for the Cleveland Brown because he had written up some dandies <laughs> on a napkin. I mean, and he was, was an insider what? apparently too. He like had had friends in Berea who were like giving him all this shit, the inside shit and stuff. Yeah, and dogs were talking to him and telling <laughs> him what to do. Yeah. And that kid wouldn't have been sanitary, would it? No, I mean, uh, no, 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 not okay, that. Cool. No. no. Uh, and the worst part is that the plays were written in blood. We won't even <laughs> talk wow. about this anymore. I'm sorry, I Killing said it. Him. Now, Killing here's the, here's the deal. Everybody's looking for a picture of Donald Trump wearing a mask, right? For the five seconds he was wearing a fucking mask. And everybody's saying, I want to see the picture of Trump wearing the mask so I can put it on social media. Well, there are things that are much more important than that. Dickie right? D is saying he wants to see Trump wearing a mask. Because you know, no, I really do, baby. I want to <laughs> see him wearing a mask, but the mask I want to see him wearing is a Dickie V mask, baby. Um, v. <laughs> uh, you are such a sick of it, but I love you, Brian. Uh, here's, the, here's the deal. <laughs> the, there is a controversy about the cheerleaders like at the University of Kentucky. Shut up, you're dinner. interrupting oh, me, and you're sorry. not going to sidetrack me with this fucking cocksucking story, because it might have actually <laughs> ended up a cocksucking story, for all I know. Oh, God, we're back I to know. Pluto again. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> must, I must have missed oh, that. Oh, call back. Go back. Call Pluto back. University of Kentucky. <laughs> The cheerleading squad has come under question because of these accusations. At a lakeside retreat, cheerleaders were seen engaging in excessive use of alcohol, some of which was provided by former cheerleaders who attended and doing basketball tosses while (laughs) semi-nude. In Tennessee, the cheerleaders were urged to make lewd chants while they were semi-nude. Now, why do we get the picture of Trump and none of these pictures? It's just wrong on so many levels. Someone has pictures. Oh my God. God. They're just not sharing them. Fucking TMZ got to pay for those pictures and show me those pictures. I want to see the basketball toss executed Partially I think it's nude. just. A, I think it's just called a basket. The problem is, it was just yeah. the dudes, Moo. No, the problem was oh. semi nude. They didn't have their pom poms. Yeah, the answer, my friend, is waving in the wind. I don't want to see that. Wow. They were no. Jared uh, Lorenz's daughters. I will say, I did know a couple of the Ohio State men, the cheerleading men. And uh, they're pretty good looking guy. Wait, wait, no, never. Well, that's not wrong, Jim. That's not wrong. Oh, reel that back actually, in, Jim, actually, or? they were, they actually, um, they worked in the bar that I worked at on campus. And I'll tell you, man, they got uh, all the ladies. They got like on a late, late, yeah, late, Thursday, late Thursday night, you were thinking, hey, listen, I'm not gay. Or My dad was head cheerleader at Ohio State in 54. He's in the first mm. uh, Sports Illustrated uh Oh my God! I That's knew I recognized you. Good story. Yep. 
So he was the guy with the megaphone. I'll show you. <clears throat> oh no, he's got a picture uh, of his father, the cheerleader. This is gonna get weird. My father, the cheerleader. It's not to be confused with my mother, the car, which we brought up in a previous <laughs> episode. Sure. Exactly. I mean, with this, what Amsterdam, we're going to see is Amsterdam's father performing a basket toss semi nude. That's why the Amsterdam most... is so goddamn handsome because it's, you know, jeans, obviously. This is the most times my mother, the car, has been talked about in the last 20 years. <laughs> oh, no, but... that's absolutely not true. I was here yeah. five, ten years ago. And we were talking they about my bring mother, this the car. Every fucking week. I Jerry know. Van Dyke and my mother, the car, was referenced more often in this program than that. any podcast in the history wow. of podcasts. Now, you know what, Amsterdam, you probably don't have the. LeBron James, St. Vincent, St. Mary's uh, Sports Illustrated. Do you? I don't remember my dad's cousin Rex Kern. Wow. Oh, uh, so oh, let, let, let me ask. Rex Kern reference, people. Rex Kern, Rex the Kern. arcane Rex Kern uh, reference. Wow. Not, no, is this a uh, no? Okay. Oh, that? I thought it was a setter. That's my dad. A swimsuit yeah. issue. Oh, He's okay. Tall. My dad had an affair with Cornelius Green. So beat that. We didn't talk about it. It was Cornelius yeah. <laughs> Green and Jerry Van Dyke. Cornelius <laughs> well, Green. Okay, no, show no, right no, here. I actually was molested by Jerry Van Dyke. That's Rex Curran. That's none of your business. That's number 10, Rex Curran. You know who that, the other famous that number would explain 10 a lot. at Ohio State was? The other famous number 10? No. Cameron Art. knows the answer. Art. Art Schleister. Art Schleister. Oh. And he bet money on it, too. And you know, the first time I met Art was at Side of the Town. I wasn't even looking at the show. And I got that right. Yeah, Art was looking at Earl Bruce um, betting money at Side of the Downs. We ran into him there. Yeah. (laughs) I remember that. I won $200 from Art Schleister at Square Dance. Wow. On the the Dosey Dose. Oh, well, what's the Hillbilly County's from? Washington We were at the same, uh, we were at Ohio State at the same time, weren't we, Bronk? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's 78. Yeah, I was there 79. Hmm. Yeah, but Fork was always high. I mean, really. Yeah, I, if you remember Ohio State, you weren't really there. You know, I think I learned how to pour beer from a keg. <laughs> All right, here's my here's my next story. This is <laughs> entitled. This is entitled. This one shouldn't surprise you. That, uh, what people are saying is the one thing that's come out of the Michael Jordan documentary is that LeBron James is solidly the number two overall best player in NBA history. Not well, even here I thought it would have been the uptick in Pepto-Bismol sales. Yeah, well, no, that's the secondary result. Now, however, not everybody feels that way. In fact, one former NBA player believes he's not even one of the five best, saying Jordan, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Bill Russell, Magic Johnson, and Kobe Bryant. Oh, yeah, that's... But why does it not surprise me? Who is it? Paul Paul Pierce. Pierce. God damn it. Bitter beer face. Top five. Fucking bitter beer face. He's a Paul douche. Pierce. That's just oh, what it is. They got beat yeah, one twenty one ninety seven the day that they retired his jersey. <laughs> that was fucking awesome. That was one of the best at home Cavalier games ever. I love I, it. If I, I honest Paul to God, Pierce. if I could get out of my wheelchair, I would kill <laughs> all of you people. This is Mark. 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 I watched Mark. the Celtics feed with Tommy Einson of that game. You know, that was the feed that came over hey, here in the hey, UK. Fork, yeah. tell me, is Paul Pierce even one of the best five Celtics of all time? Five Celtics, no. Of so. oh, just Celtics. So. Just Celtics. Just Celtics, is no. Is Paul he's... Pierce one of the best five? No. One of the best clutch shooters. He's a fantastic player. Is he one of the best Celtics of all time? No. There's so no. many good Celtics. That's a tough, oh, yeah. Yeah. tough club Who's to get he? into. A very tough in the, uh, Mount Rushmore. Is he even the 10? I'm sorry, Mo. Didn't mean to jack. What about Bailey Howell? <laughs> Bailey Howell, definitely Don, one of those. Don Nelson. <laughs> Don McCauley. Havlicek. DJ okay. Bird. Havlicek. Russell. Kuzi. Havlicek. Hale. Funny. Kevin Kevin Karish, Karish, the Chief, Dennis Johnson. 
Russell. Oh, you got to, if you're going to do the Tommy Heinsohn thing. Danny <laughs> Ainge just a piss exactly. yeah, it's like, there you go, bro. yeah, I know where this was going. And it's like, <laughs> how about Heinsohn. McCarty? McCarty <laughs> was always one of my favorite. The only player whose name rhymed with my favorite rum drink. (laughs) 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 Fucking Tommy Heinsohn. His favorite was, you know, Nate Nate Tiny Archibald. Hey, hey, Uh, Rocks. Rocks, back me up on this. White people need a team, don't they? Danny Ainge was a scrappy, (laughs) scrappy competitor. I mean, he was, he was like a Don, uh, Stockton before there was a Stockton. I don't remember what that guy's name was, but come on. Wow. He's our all-white team. The all-white team. Oh, Stephen Wright time. Here's Stephen Wright, okay? We're ready? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> would the Lone Ranger wear a mask in the pandemic? And if he did, how would you know who he was? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. I, you know, I just like to do dead comedian shtick. You know, what can I tell you? Is Stephen Wright dead? Everybody's uh, dead. I don't think so, no. <laughs> that's, uh, yes, he that's, is. That's his Nate career. Bron- I know, I know his career, but I know Bron thinks everybody's dead. But, <laughs> but he is really? dead. He's dead. I, I, I think he's dead. I think he's dead, too. Stephen Why do Wright I think? Died? No, he's still alive. Jeez, Years you active, you, you seventy-eight to present. You guys are complete dicks. Stephen Wright was we, a really, really, really good comedian. What do you? We fucking killed him. Now. We killed Kenny. We killed him. <laughs> oh, my God. Bastard. We're sorry. We met Andy Kaufman. Sorry about that. Yeah, why, yeah. why? Why did I ever get back involved with this program? I don't know. People are horrible, horrible that's, people. That's on, don't blame us. That's on you. That's exactly well, why saying. you got involved. Ziff, you gave up. Yeah. You picked the wrong time to give up fentanyl. Well, the, <laughs> no, no, the thing is, I'm, join us. I'm such Before. a narcissist. There was no way I could go any longer without just sucking Moose dick. I mean, it was. You just, <laughs> I just had to get back to being feeling better. Yeah. But my God, you guys, you're whore. <laughs> the one thing I liked most about Danny Ainge, he never complained about the calls that went against him. Johnny Heinsohn. <laughs> Would he play a Dartmouth? Or I think it was Dartmouth. I don't know. Uh, yeah, there, there have been so many bad Celtics when you stop and think about it. You know, Listen, like... Ed McCauley was my childhood hero. That's not true. All right. Uh, <laughs> that was the name of my band in junior high school. Thea Thomas. <laughs> Thank you. You know, Mark, you really, you saved me. Isaiah Thomas, Isaiah Thomas did the hippie, hippie break. That was kind of a 90s (laughs) weak sauce joke. It was. Uh, Did you you guys hear the other big sports news is that the, uh, the Steelers are only going to sell half of their season tickets in preparation for, you know, social distancing. Beating the hell out of the box. And then the Bengals are hoping to sell that many because they, <laughs> they don't plan on it anyway. <laughs> but yeah. Ba-dum-bum. That is yeah. actually true. That was how about a- that yeah. how about that Mike Trout the rookie card? How in the fuck did they get that kind of coin? <laughs> don't know. I mean it's not like that was a one on one. It's like how in the fuck? Yeah. Imagine how it would have been if he'd actually been to a couple of World Series and actually won something. Mike Trout. He hit a million by then easily. If he, hey, if he, are if you if guys he bought a men's, if he bought a men's warehouse franchise, would he be a trouser trout? Wow. Really? You want to really? go with that to end the no, show? No, no. no. Really? He he, okay. How about, how about this? Young Tuck Park or Park Young Tech. I'm really not clear on this stuff. The all-time hits leader in the KBO, 41 years old, 19 years with the the LG Twins. The LG Twins? 
<laughs> I, I'm that, are those his groupies or is that his team? I think we're talking no, Korean no. baseball. Moo, yeah. I'm trying to prove to you that I can once bring a sports story to this. And okay. because the KBO is happening right now, I'm just saying this is fantastic. This is like if Ichiro smelled of fish sauce and lime juice. I mean, this guy, this whatever his park name. This, I mean, he's still doing it. 19 years on the Twins. Uh, Unbelievable. Uh, I'm done. So how come screen share has been disabled? Because something happened. <laughs> I really don't know how to do it. Is, is the, is... Has it been disabled? Yeah, I won't let me screen share. Really? Let me take a look. It's probably yeah. just you and me, Brock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you two have been sick Cal- about it, probably. <laughs> Cal Sitong. <laughs> If you can explain to me how to do it, I promise you I will do it. Well, something just I just, I truly just don't shared, know. Somebody just shared I, something. Yeah, look, the Jets are signing Joe Flacco. Wow. <laughs> huge news. Huge, wow. huge breaking news. Are you sure that isn't the onion? <laughs> I'm sorry, Mo, but yeah. you're going to have to stay on the air. Hey, <laughs> I, I have, have to it's deal don't... with this Flacco story. Yeah, yeah some Sam Darling just... said Joe who? Host disabled participant screen sharing. There you go. That's the warning. So it's well, who's decided hey, doesn't want us. Listen, explain to me him. how I can do this and I'll be happy to do it. But we can't. We're not we're not able. Well that's interesting. Maybe somebody finally got this thing right, you know. Uh... <laughs> I, think, I think a lot of people are worried about me, and they should be. 940 <laughs> positives in Manatee County, folks. 940. 201 hospitalizations and a partridge in a pear tree. The median wow. age, 59 years of age, two years longer than NFL players live on average. Can we get and a more years younger than the current age of our move? Pull up Palm Beach County. Can, can we get a oh, bio on Rock? I, Let's watch the medium age jump dramatically. Some of us 59. don't know. Some of us don't know rocks, so and we can just do. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, and uh, oh yeah. wow! Yesterday was uh, two days ago was a big day there. 189 croaked, uh, you know, or positive cases at any rate. Yeah, but look at that. That's a you know average median age only 55. Wow. And look, there are more men than women, but if you go back to Manatee County, and this is interesting, that how many, look how many more women, I I think it's just karma. (laughs) But you know, I I think women live longer than men. And so if they're in nursing homes, I think they're more likely to be women in nursing homes than men. It just seems longer when you're married. There you go. (laughs) Hi-oh. hi And meanwhile, to the south of me in beautiful Sarasota County, if you're wondering about that, only 549 uh, positive residents. And uh, however, the testing is really interesting, 11,400, and that's in Sarasota. But uh, in my county in Manatee, look at how many more, 2,500 more tests. So that accounts for some of this too. Do you have any Dave County? Uh, yeah, sure. I have Dade County. I do. He's got every county. I got it. Two, I'm every two county. Me, yeah. It's all in yeah, me. I, oh, ah, ah, ah. Ah. 49 as a Yeah, but he had to pull eight. it out of Debbie Wasserman and Schultz. Yeah, but yeah. it's... Uh, She's a down, dumbass. But <laughs> I, I need... To do some work. I think you should see the size of this crab. <laughs> Why? Why are there so many twenty-five to thirty-four year olds? It, Paul it, Broward. It's about response. Indeed. I, I mean, this, what? Moo, this is what I do for a living. Hanging at the I, beach. I just want to know what it seems like. It'll be in September. Yeah, you know, like it's, just <laughs> let it. And th- and this is Broward. Yeah, that's yeah, not good. 
I mean, the median age is younger, yeah, and I'm wondering if, if yeah, this. Yeah, oh, wow. it is. But you have to you have to know when they'll come out and actually be part of public transportation and stuff. I mean, so it's we'll see. All right. Well, everybody, it's seven o'clock and time to rock. Uh, everybody, I want to thank everybody for, for helping out. And uh, thanks for interrupting me and not letting the show go anywhere. This is we'll be referred to henceforth as the filibuster show. And uh, I, I do appreciate it, everybody words, helping out. And uh, Good, I promise you, I will shut up as much as you want me to shut up. If you nah, can. you're a piglet. Any piggy gets to speak his mind. That's the point. God gave you the opportunity to actually talk. God gave rock and roll to you. I love That's God. Right. Thank God that God gave me God. So uh, are you going to let your hair grow out differently this time, Bronk, just out of curiosity? I don't know. It might come out as snakes. Who knows? Come back uh, as, the, as the curly uh, Jufro you used to have or whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you know what I'd do if I were you? I would go to Heathrow and I would start selling incense. He could be one of the Hare Krishnas from uh, yeah. Airplane. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Do that Rama Lama Ding yeah. Dong or whatever. Nice contemporary. It's, it's, it's easy when the guys who don't have cameras are making all the jokes, isn't it? You know? <laughs> Probably look like Mr. Potato Head. You know? <laughs> oh, I love you, Mark. Uh, All right, everybody. Uh, why we're done. Why we we're do done. Uh, that's the end of the program. <laughs> we'll see you again, I promise, on Monday. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time. Hasta la vista, Faster Heads. Bye. Bye.